Hi, and thanks for tuning in to Sweet Talk with Taylor. Today I'll be showing you the different kinds of markup that can be applied within your construction suite estimate and how each one can be used for different purposes. Within the estimate, there are two different kinds of markup that can be applied. The first will be your overhead and margin markup, which is located at the end of your estimate. You can navigate to the overhead margin page by clicking the skip to the end arrow down here at the bottom of the estimate, or by navigating through this drop down to the company overhead and margin sheet at the bottom. Now, if your company overhead margin sheet is not currently present within your estimate, you can navigate to the insert tab at the top and choose to insert the overhead and margin sheet. And that will add the overhead margin sheet here at the end that will look just like this. Now, by default, the overhead margin sheet has overhead, margin, contingency, and two other subcategories as well that you can use for your own purposes. You can certainly rename these if you would like. Uh, these are just the defaults. And the way that you're going to use this overhead and margin is to come in here and you can either put a percentage or a flat rate in for the overhead margin. And this percentage will actually apply to the subtotal of your estimate from all of the estimated categories and add that amount to the total of the project. So if we come in here and add a 10% company overhead, that will calculate a 10% of the estimated cost we see over here in the cost by type. And it will give us a new total price of $36,615 that has been added to our project total. Now, as I mentioned, you can also come in here and add a flat rate overhead margin or just a lump sum dollar value that you can put in here that will add to the project total as well. Now, one thing you may notice is that you have the option to either do a percent of costs or a percent margin overhead. The difference between these two is going to be the way it calculates with respect to the final project total. If you look at these formulas right here, the percent of cost is actually going to take 10% or whatever percentage you put in of the project subtotal and just add 10% of that value to the subtotal to give you your project total. The percent margin is going to calculate by taking 10% of that project subtotal, dividing it by 1 minus 10% or 1 minus whichever percentage you choose to uh, include, and then add that amount to the project total. So you will notice that the margin is actually going to be a larger value than the costs. So if you are calculating your overhead and margin and don't seem to be getting the correct percentage, you may want to try to play with those two options and see if one of them fits your needs better than the other. Now the overhead and margin is going to apply to every item essentially within the estimate, so it's going to apply to that project total. If you want to apply markup to specific items, but not necessarily to all items in the estimate, what you're going to want to use is the line item markup. Now line item markup can be accessed on any of our category sheets. You just have to show the line item markup column here, and what you can do is go in, in any of these items or lump sum subcategories, click into the line item markup, it will give you the option to either add a percentage markup, so in this case we could do a 10% markup, or a fixed amount. We could come in here and just do $200. So we could add a percentage of the cost, or just a fixed amount to that. If we do 10%, you will see that it will now add a 10% of the total cost as a markup and give us a new total price. Now one quick way to apply markup to large portions of your estimate without having to go through each individual section is through the classification markups. So if you go up here to our estimating tab and go to set classification markups, you will see that here you have material, labor, subcontractor, equipment, and other markups that you can designate. If we come in here and say we have a 10% material markup, 8% markup on labor items, and we'll say a 7% markup on other, if we come down here and choose the link all items, this will take every item in our estimate that is designated as these particular classifications, as you can see here in our classification column, and apply this markup percentage to each one. Now we do also have the options to link items only within selected areas, so categories or subcategories within our estimate, or to link items within a specific classification. So if we only want to link material items, we can certainly come in here, change the material markup, and link those, as well as any other classification that we have. For now though, we're just going to link all items so you can see what will happen when we choose these percent markups. And when we close out, you will now see that we have some labor items here with an 8% line item markup, material with 10% line item markup, and so on and so forth. So that's a quick way for you to edit these items within your estimate. Now take note that you can exclude certain items from this if you come in and It'll let you know that the current value is populated from the classification markup and ask if you want to change the markup for this single item. 
You can certainly come in here and change this if you would like a higher or lower markup and change that back to a different value. Take note that if you go back in here, you can also come through and link this back to the classification markup. Select OK. And that will then revert back to the item percentage markup that we have in the classification markup section. Now the last type of markup or additional cost that you might want to apply in your estimate is going to be sales tax. Sales tax can be modified in the estimating tab where it says set sales tax. You can set materials and services sales tax to be applied in the estimate and you can also choose your calculation method whether you would like markup to be applied before tax, after tax, or if you would like tax and markup to be applied separately to the estimated value of the item. Let's say we set a materials tax of 10% and a service tax of 8%. We can go ahead and select OK. You can see that our materials now have a sales tax set based on that percentage that we had just inserted in the sales tax section. And that will contribute to the total cost of the item. Now, if we navigate back to the project totals page, you can see how all of these items correspond together. You'll first have your estimated value, which will be the result of the quantity and the cost of your items. You'll have your dollar markup, which is a result of the percentage of the line item markup that you have attributed to that item. The dollar markup will add to the estimate to give you your total cost. You will then apply sales tax to your total cost to get your total price. As you see, you can combine or compile multiple different markups, such as line item markup, sales tax, and overhead and margin, in order to get the desired outcome for the total markup on each item. Keeping track of your markups and overhead on a job is critical to maintaining a sufficient profit margin. And with these tools, you can customize and organize your individual markups better than ever. Thanks for tuning in to Sweet Talk.